Hello everyone, welcome back to PJ Chen Design Channel. This channel is about sharing Rhino 3D knowledge to students and professionals, learning various Rhino 3D technique. What we like to do today is, uh, is actually a math question instead of the model questions. The model is not too complicated, but we need to do some math to calculate correct facet. Are you ready? Let's get started. If you search for the Google, you can see a lot of facet uh, ring. A lot of time, they are computer made, so the, each of the facet is really equal size. However, you also see some of the design like this. Um, this type of a design usually is hand carved, so it's spontaneous to carve out the facet. So they, they are uh, one of a kind in the way that it's hard to repeat in the the facet unless you making a rubber mold. What we like to do today is more of a uniform um, look and more of like machine cut look and so that way we can use the math to calculate it. So let's go back to right now. You can see each of the facet is almost an equal size and Depends on the uh, cutting tool that you have, they could be different sizes. So that's starting with making a ring band first. Again, let's set up the ring size for 16 millimeter in the diameter. Let's type it 16 here. And I would like to use the um, profile for my ring. It's going to be something like a half round wire. So um, I do not want to set it up for like two Y since it's a men's ring. So I think somewhere in between six to eight millimeter, it's a good size. And then let's move on, uh, move down the control point to make it a little bit shallower. You don't want to make it too shallow because you actually need to cut out the material. So let's make it something like this. It's roughly about two and a half, or you can make it just a little bit uh, taller since we're gonna cut out some material okay and then next what we would like to do is close this uh, curve and let's join it together to make it into the ring band we're gonna use the command leaving under the surface you have sweep one rail and then this is the rail this is the cross section and then you will get the ring like this so this is the basic ring that we're going to cut it off okay the second step that we are going to do is to creating a solid. Um, even though it's not a line right in the center, that's all right. And we just need to pick up both of the solid and using the align tool, type it zero. So they will be perfect aligned. And we just need to use the gumball to move up this guy here. Depends on how big of the surface you want to cut it off first we can do is do a test let's look at the front view and let's use the polar array pick up this object and we use the center type it zero and let's try it for 12 and see what does it look like all right so it look like it is overlapping a little bit um so our new facet it's it's pretty big uh that's Let's try a bowling and see how they actually look. So now we are going to use the bowling difference. And this is the object and those are the cutting tool. So the first one we cut it out is something like this. Actually, like, they look nice to me. So I'm going to use this facet right here. If you want to facet smaller, when you are doing the polar array, you might want to increase the number. Okay, the second one I'm going to do, again, I'm going to creating a solid and using the align tool, align to the center, type it zero. So you have that one there. Now I'm going to move this one up a little bit. And since I am going to keep it half round, so I'm going to move it here and tilt it to follow my... Um, round surface and have it coming down there all right if we go ahead and cutting this um it, it doesn't have 
the look that we are look, uh, going to look for. So actually I need to rotate this guy. We were having 12 section, which 360 degree divide, divided by 12 is 30 degree. So I want to cut it in between. That means I need to rotate my cutter to be uh, 15 degrees. So I'm going to type it here, 15. So that will be my cutter, all right? Let me mirror to the other side. Let's do a test. Now, as you're using the bowling tool, this will be bowling all of this. So then you get this surface. It looks really nice over there. So I'm gonna to go back one more step and have this one to be a polar array for 12 of them. Center type it zero. 12 of them is something like this. Okay. Um, let's go ahead to bowling this one and then um, mirror to the other side like that one. All right. So those are going to be our cutting tool. It look a little bit complicated, but um, if you follow the step, it's actually the math questions. So let's go ahead to bowling difference. So this is the ring that we want to be cut, and this is our cutting tool. Then we will get this beautiful facet there. All right. So I think I would like to cut one more time because I have it all facet, but we're close to the side. It's a little bit rounded. So I'm going to do the same thing one more time. Let's bring up another solid. And again, let's go ahead to... Um, align to the center all right this time let's move it this up we want it to be really tilted almost like this way and then we want it to come in down here all right i do not need to rotate it because um we this that we only need to rotate it uh the second color all right so let's do a test cut I'm going to bowling difference this all of this so you got that little cut i actually would like to have it cut it a little bit more and actually taper a little bit more something like this so let's do another test cut all right it looked like really nice facet there so um let me repeating the process we were doing twice Polar array, type it zero as our center. Again, we want to use 12 of them. And then we want a bowling unit, this one first. Let's go ahead to mirror to the other side. All right, so that's using the bowling difference one more time. This is our ring. And we are going to cut out from those two. So we'll get this beautiful facet and look really uniform. So this is the tutorial today for making a men's facet ring band. I hope you enjoy. Please like and comment and share my video. I especially want to thank my subscriber who is constantly leaving the comment on each of my video that really helped me on my YouTube ranking so I can reach more people. Thank you and I will see you next Monday. Thank you.